very, very quiet. I'm hunting Guapit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good evening and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today we're going to be doing um, an induction proof of the famous like, Fibonacci sequence. And the reason why I made that little uh, Looney Tunes joke there is because um, uh, the Fibonacci sequence of Fibonacci numbers were first um, conceived by Leonardo da Pisa, or Fibonacci, um, in order to model um, the breeding population of rabbits when they mate with one another. And it turns out that it follows this seemingly very complicated um, explicit form, but this very, very, very much more nice recurrence relation. And what a recurrence relation is, is basically a sequence that you define by expressing the previous terms um, before it. And basically, in plain old English, what the Fibonacci sequence tells you to do is to get the next number in the sequence, next number in Fibonacci sequence, take your previous two numbers. and add them up. Doing so you get the next thing. So in order to listen to like just a list of numbers to make it like easier to follow, you have one over one, then I have to take this one and one and add them together. That gives me two. Then I get the one and two and add them together. I get three, two and three. Take those two consecutive numbers, integers, add them together, get five, three and five, get eight, and so forth. So you need like these base value seeds in there. So um, here's the thing. Um, we're going to be using this recurrence relationship on top of these guys to prove induction. And here's the thing. What's the main thing that happens in proof by induction? What, what's the skeleton of how it works? Well, you have for proof by induction. You have a base case, first off. You need to prove like base cases. And in this case, plural, because we have two seeds we need to start with, one rabbit and then another rabbit. You can't breed any more rabbits um, just from a single rabbit. Uh, a rabbit can't mate itself. <laughs> okay, and yeah. Anyhow, um, so you need to solve this for like two particular base cases, and then you need to go and s you need to go and make an assumption. Assume your inductive hypothesis for any general integer, positive integer. After that, use assumption as evidence. To prove the next step, n plus first step, the inductive step, as we call, and then you overall you can conclude that this proof holds then for all um, elements of the natural numbers. So that's the outline of how you do a proof by in induction. So let me go and discuss how we're going to do this. And I'm afraid we're going to have to be like Mr. Elmer Fudd and go and shoot this bunny. Say goodbye to the cute bunny. And to the Italian flag as well. <laughs> Sorry, it's all to make more room. So first we need to show that this explicit formula, this explicit closed form, gives us the first Fibonacci number. So first of all, let's put n equals 1, f of 1, into this. We'll get 1 plus square root of 5 raised to 1 power. Then that's minus 1 minus square root of 5 raised to the power of 1, all divided by 2 square root of 5. And we do some nice algebra over here. And we get 1 minus 1 and square root of 5 minus square root of 5. Uh, wait, that doesn't sound right to me. Ah, I'm sorry. 1 minus 1, so that becomes 0. 
and we get square root of 5 minus minus square root of 5. Be careful of the double negative by the mistake I made there. Which simply becomes um, a positive. Uh, yeah, wait. Yeah, square root of 5 minus minus square root of 5. I'll just divide by 2 square root of 5. So this simply becomes 2 square root of 5. 2 square root of 5. That's 1. We're done in the first case. Let me now go and do... Let me now go and do the second case. One plus square root of five squared minus one minus square root of five squared. Oh, actually, I'm going to do something. Okay, this is where we need to be careful, and I'm going to be a bit clever with how I leave my work here. This one plus square root of five squared, and this one minus square root of five squared. I'm going to leave it here. It's going to be very important. So I'm going to go and make these two complications to the side of the whiteboard. I have 1 plus square root of 5 to the square. And based on how it adds up, you should get simply 1 plus 2 square root of 5 plus 5, which equals 6 plus 2 square root of 5. Similarly, if you do it with 1 minus square root of 5, you get the same thing except you get um, conjugate of the sign of this radical, so you get 6 minus 2 square root of 5. And now we're going to go and like find f2, oh that's simply this guy minus this guy, so equals 6 plus 2 square root of 5 minus 6 plus 2 square root of 5, distributed it in, and that goes to 2 squared square root of 5, so that becomes 4 square root of 5, or 4 square root of 5, which once again is 1. We're done with the first two base cases. Okay, great. Uh. And now comes the fun part. The goal we want to prove. What do we want to prove? We want to prove that when we assume If we assume that f of n equals the closed form that I erased and showed at the very beginning to you, then the n plus first case follows, which means I get 1 plus square root of 5 to the n plus 1 minus 1 minus square root of 5 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 times square root of 5. And we'll simply use this from the recurrence relation. So we're only allowed to assume this, we can only use this on top of the recurrence relation, which says that f of n plus 1 equals f of n plus f of n minus 1. So actually, yeah, not only can we assume f of n, my, n, f of n, but we can assume f of n minus 1 as well. So this guy will equal, basically, this monster. Now, this might look like an extremely ugly algebra expression to simplify, but always remember that with the final answer, we always want to mimic the form of the final product. So that's the advantage of having the goal 
of the proof of induction in mind. So, we kind of want to turn this expression to something with the 1 plus square root of 5 minus 1 square root what, minus 1 minus square root of 5 divided by a power of 2 times square root of 5. The first thing we can easily do is give these guys a common denominator. Just multiply um, the first term by 2 over 2 and the second guy by 4 over 4. So in other words, I multiply guy by here. I multiply this by 2 over 2. And then I multiply this guy by 4 over 4. That way, we can both end up with 2 to the n plus 1 and 2 to the n plus 1 on this guy. And then we have a common denominator. I have 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 square root of 5. And then if we multiply this out, uh, let's see. Okay, yep, yep, I'll get this. Oops, I almost had a mistake. Okay, and then I have 2 times 1 plus square root of 5 to the n minus 2 times 1 minus square root of 5 to the n. And have this plus 4 times 1 plus square root of 5 to the n minus 1 minus 4 times 1 minus square root of 5 to the n minus 1. Close this entire expression here. Okay, it seems we made things even worse. We have four terms now, and they look very ugly, but note that there is a common factor that we can actually get out of them. We're not going to bother with the two and the four since we introduced that for complication. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to factor out the one minus, the one plus or minus square root of five to the n minus one, because like that's the smallest factor we have. Um, we're going to do this individually for each of these two terms. So there's going to be a bunch of very not nice looking factoring. To make it easier to see which guys I'm going to factor, I'm going to go and highlight it for you. So the green is going to go grouped up with this guy. And I'm going to factor that out. Oopsies. And then the red gets grouped up together. So I'm not going to show this for sake of time, but if you expand this very quickly, you should end up with 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 square root of 5. You have to be very careful with this crazy board. And I end up with 1 plus square root of 5 to the n minus 1 being multiplied by 2 times 1 plus square root of 5 plus 4. And now I have this being subtracted by 1 minus square root of 5 to the n minus 1. And I get almost the exact same thing here. 2 times 1 minus square root of 5 plus 4. And now is when the magic happens. Because I'm not going to do both of them. I'll just take this guy for example, because by symmetry in terms of the radical, you'll get the same guy with the opposite sign. If I multiply 2 times 1 plus square root of 5 plus 4, that gives me 2 plus 2 square root of 5 plus 4. But guess what that equals? 6 plus 2 square root of 5. And what do we want? We essentially want to get n plus 1 in there. So, we can use what we already proved in the base case and simply plug it into there. <laughs> yep, that's essentially what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, we get 
1 over 2 n plus 1 square root of 5 and then 1 plus square root of 5 n minus 1 the coup de gras this just becomes 1 plus square root of 5 squared and then this just becomes 1 minus square root of 5 n minus 1 times 1 minus square root of 5 to the square and voila if we're doing just with the exponents n minus 1 plus 2 simply equals n plus 1 so indeed we do end up getting the n plus 1 exponent that we search for at the very end which is indeed this form QED So yeah, we have to go and breed and then kill some rabbits in order to... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said it like that. We get, well, we have to go and like breed lots of rabbits in order to go and like um, conceive of this thing. But yep, that's it. There's a very nice um, and somewhat more elegant way of like um, proving like um, the Fibonacci explicit form using induction. If you weren't using the base case, what you would have to do alternatively as a move in order to prove it is basically do a sneaky trick of adding by zero. One of these so-called tricks where you, zero just basically equals a minus a, right? Plus a minus a. So you would have to do that with like some really convoluted crazy form, something like plus x to the n minus x to the n. And those kinds of steps and proofs, I, I really find counterintuitive and, and, and very just nasty and hard for the reader to pick up. They're unfortunately, in my opinion, very common all throughout advanced analysis. <laughs> I'm, I'm not an analyst, I'm afraid. But yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my demonstration of the proof at least, is that quick, elegant step that makes things a lot easier to process. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please take care during the COVID-19 pandemic, and I wish you a pleasant day.